This is Imperial College, next to the Science Museum in Kensington. The man I'm going to tell you about did his best work here, where he was known by the wonderful title of Professor of Heavy Engineering. He developed a new form of transport. He was one of the very first television scientists, and he was certainly the best-known engineer in Britain in the 1970s. He was Eric Laithwaite. Born in Atherton, Lancashire, Laithwaite went to Kirkham Grammar School and Manchester University, where he worked before moving to Imperial College in 1964. An imposing figure, when asked what a professor of heavy engineering was, he replied, one over 16 stone. Laithwaite became famous for perfecting an entirely new sort of motor, a linear motor. Now, conventional motors tend to give you rotation which is wonderful for an electric drill or if you want a hairdryer or something like that. But there are applications for which you want movement in a straight line. If you want to drive a train, for example, this isn't terribly convenient because you have to use this rotating motion to drive wheels and the wheels to drive the train, and that obviously causes a lot of friction. And Laithwaite thought it would be terrific if you could take all the coils and magnets which are grouped around the shaft and, and unwrap them into a straight line, and then you might get your linear motion. And here is a linear motor in the very lab where he developed his. And basically, each of these is a coil, an electromagnet, and I'm going to pass the current through and make them all magnetic. And I hold this bit of iron over them. You'll see they are indeed magnetic. This is a piece of iron, and I think you believe that it's attracted to those magnets. But of course, he didn't really want it attracted, because if he wanted to drive a train, he didn't want it held down. That would maximize the friction. He wanted to reduce the friction. So he cleverly used Aluminium. Now, here's a piece of aluminium, and you'll see it's not attracted at all to these magnets because aluminium's not magnetic. But if I hold it above the whole lot, a very curious thing happens. Look. Now, isn't that amazing? It's actually levitating. You can see it's quite loose, quarter of an inch maybe above the magnets. And the reason why that happens is that in here is a magnetic field going up and down, north, south, north, south, 50 times a second. And that changing magnetic field produces a current flowing in the aluminium. And the current in the aluminium generates its own magnetic field. And if this is a north pole, it generates a north pole here, and they repel one another. And therefore, it levitates. Now, this is magic, of course. If you want a train, then in principle, you could have one without any friction. And the only question remains is, how is he going to get it to move? Well, he thought it would be wonderful if he could generate a sort of magnetic wave to carry the train along with it. Let me show you how it was going to work. Here I've got red, blue, and black. Imagine they're like those magnets, and that this is a north pole up at the top and south at the bottom, north, south, north, south. And if I turn my handle a bit, you'll see that the blue then becomes the north-south, and then the black. So they move in alternation, and they're sweeping north and south poles along there. And if I put my train on here, you'll see that it's swept along on the crest of a wave. Well, actually, along the trough of a wave. But anyway, a magnetic wave. And that's what he was going to do here. And it was very clever, because he's using three-phase electricity, which means that this is a north pole, and there's another north pole further along, and this is a bit behind it, and this is a bit behind. So each of these is an alternating current, but they're slightly out of step with one another, exactly as those things were over there. Now, I'll switch on my current, and you'll find that if I release the tether here, I have indeed got what he called a magnetic river. One, two, three. Wow, look at that. Tremendous speed. And we'll do it again. I'm not pushing, I'm just letting go. One, two, three. And that is how the magnetic levitating train was born. One, two, three. Lathwaite formed a company, Tracked Hovercraft Limited, to test the linear motor in a train which ran on a track in Cambridgeshire until the government withdrew funding. The idea was taken up in Japan, Germany, and the USA. Ironically, one of the few applications in Britain for this new form of transport was the rig used to crash cars at the Motor Industry Research Association. 
linear motors got as far as they did only because of the extraordinary enthusiasm and self-confidence of Eric Laithwaite. He was brilliant on television and was invited to present the first ever televised series of Christmas lectures for children from the Royal Institution. It literally flies through space. He appeared on everything now, from Noel Edmonds' multicolored swap shop to Parkinson, and he enjoyed being seen as an unconventional scientist. Here's a genuine Lathwaite experiment that you can try at home, burning the candle at both ends. Here's an ordinary household candle, and you need to expose the wick at the other end, as I have here. And then you need something like a, a skewer or a knitting needle or a nail that you can warm up and then push through the middle so that the whole thing can rock. And then you simply suspend it and you light the candle at both ends and watch. Now, it takes a bit of time to get going, so I started one a few minutes ago. And my candle is now rocking in a rather curious way. The question is, what makes it rock? 